So now that we understand our naming conventions, our folder structures, and adding meta tags to pages, we need to take a look at adding text to the pages as well and working with text inside of Dreamweaver. Double click on about.html. In the about page, there's just a tiny little bit of text, so we want to be able to add some more. Click your cursor after the end of the first paragraph and hit return. If you have Word, then I want you to navigate to your Chapter 4 folder and your Project Files folder and open extratext.doc. Now you might notice that I'm opening this up in TextEdit, which is my text editor on a Mac. Now you could open it up in Word or Notepad, whichever text editing software that you have, but note that Word is the one where our Paste Special feature was made for because Word ends up adding extra characters sometimes, special characters, and that's what we want to get rid of when we paste special. You'll notice that this particular file also has bolding and italicizing as well as paragraph returns. I'm going to select all and I'm going to copy it. So control C or command C depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC. When I come back to Dreamweaver, instead of just pasting, I'm going to use paste special so I can make sure that I'm getting the right formatting for the text that I have selected. I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose paste special. My only options from getting this from the document that I grabbed it from is text only, text with structure, paragraph list and tables. If you actually opened up this particular file with Word, you would also see your other options for text with structure, bold, or text with full structure. I can either choose to retain my line breaks or not. Go ahead and choose it now so that we can see what that is like. Click OK. So we see because I've got my line breaks in and depending on where I grab this text from to begin with, because we've turned on our invisibles for our line breaks, I can actually see them in my file, which is very handy at this point. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my line break and actually click on return so that I can see an actual paragraph instead of one entire paragraph that just happened to have a few line breaks in it. And by the way, my line break is just a shift return inside of Dreamweaver if I would like to create one. Now that I've gotten rid of all my line breaks, I need to style my text. So I put my cursor inside of that very first subhead and in my property inspector, I'm going to choose Heading 2. So I see this is already styled. So that we can take a look at what that style entails, go ahead and click on your CSS panel over on the right hand side. I'm going to go ahead and double click my insert panel to close it up so I can have just a little bit more room. I see that I have a style for H2. So depending on how you have your panels set up, I just want to make sure that we're all seeing this the exact same way. So I have a category view down at the bottom left hand corner. I also have a list view, but I have selected to show only the properties that go along with that particular rule. Okay, so now I see that I have a border bottom. It's dashed and it has a color set to it. The color of the font itself the size, my line height, my margins, and some padding on the bottom for that particular style. You'll notice on the right hand side on the underneath I have a trash can so if I would like to trash that particular style I can get rid of it. If I would like to edit the rule I can click on the little pencil. If I want to add a new CSS rule I can click on this button and I can link a new style sheet at this point. So go ahead and click on your edit rule or double click the H2 inside of the panel itself. I'll just click the pencil. So in my type category if I wanted to change this a little bit if I thought that the font was a little too large I could change this to 1.3 M. I'm also going to change my line height to 1.8 M. 
Now that's going to give me some extra spacing in between my lines in my paragraph. I've got my color set here, so let's say we want to change the color to something else. So we can see what it looks like if we change our style sheet. On border, I've got a dashed line. Let's change that to dotted and see what that looks like. And we'll change one more thing and make it a little more obvious. And I'll click OK. So now I see that it's red. I've got a blue dotted line instead of a dashed line. And the size has changed just a little bit. Now, unfortunately, this is going to change that style everywhere. And I may or may not want to do that. So we've copied and pasted a file inside of Dreamweaver. But what if I have an Excel file that I need to place as well? So let's go to our Files panel. And I would like you to open both join end and join start.html. In our end file, we'll see what we're actually going to produce. So I have some past winners, and I've got a table in here with some tabular data. The thing about tabular data is it can always be sorted inside of Dreamweaver as well. But let's go to the start file. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. Right above my last paragraph, I'm going to put my cursor and hit the return key. I'm going to go to my File menu, Import, and Tabular Data. So I'm going to browse for that tabular data, and I happen to have a TXT file inside of our Chapter 4 folder. So Adobe Software Winners.txt. It opens up this dialog box that lets me make sure that I have a tab delimiter. I could do comma, semicolon, or other. Do I want my table width to fit the data, or do I want to set it to either a percentage or a pixel size? And we're going to just set that to 500 pixels wide. I'm going to say 0 for the padding, 2 for my spacing, and let's set that to a 0 border as well. The top row I'm going to format to bold, and we're going to click OK. So I'll scroll down a little bit so I can actually see it. And now I have a file that has all of my tabular data in it without me having to copy and paste that from some other location. This is a great way of bringing in tabular data and a good place to talk about whether to use tables or divs for layout. This is tabular data, so this is a good reason to use an actual table. We'll be explaining more about tables in another chapter. So even though we're going to talk about tables in another chapter, there's a few things that we can do with this table right here without manipulating it too much. If I click my cursor inside of that table, I see my tag selector at the bottom of that window. Go ahead and click on the table tag and select the entire table. So far, we've only had text selected when we've taken a look at our property inspector. And this is what your property inspector is going to look like when we have a table selected. Notice in the left-hand corner of my property inspector is a really a blank space to give the table a name. This is going to be the ID for this table so that I can make changes to this table specifically and not all tables through CSS. So I'm going to call it winners. Now if you take a look at your tag inspector, you'll notice that you have a pound sign and winners after it. With my table selected, I can also go to my Commands menu and Sort Table. So I can sort by column, order, ascending, descending, and then I can sort other columns as well. So let's say that we want to sort our column on the left-hand side and we'll say that we want it to be alphabetical. Instead of it being by the year, we'll do it alphabetically. Do I want to sort including the first row, sort the headers, footers, etc.? We're just going to click Apply. And now all of the first names are in alphabetical order in the left-hand column. 
This is a great feature inside of Dreamweaver in working with tables. Maybe it wasn't sorted before you brought the table in. I'll click OK and we'll move on to Named Anchors next. 